Hi, and welcome to a special edition of Assignment the World. I'm Tish Jenkins. Recycling saves millions of tons of waste from entering America's landfills. And in recent years, the amount of recycled material has increased annually. The Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, estimates that in 2007 alone, over 63 million tons of waste was recycled, much of which makes its way through recycling centers, where it is separated before being shipped off to become new products. Schools and offices use endless amounts of paper, products are shipped in cardboard boxes, drinks are sold in plastic containers, and a lot of our food comes in these same materials. Recycling, which is the making of new products from old material, is one of the best ways to keep this stuff from ending up in landfills. Nowadays, most people know that you separate your recyclables, but you may not know what happens after they leave your home or school. The Recyclery in Kenmore, New York, specializes in collecting these materials and keeping planet Earth clean. They take in up to 230 tons of recyclables each day, preparing them to be sent around the country to become new products. Material is, is collected from the western New York area here and brought to this facility and uh, typically it's, it's divided in the truck into two material streams, the fiber products and the commingle products. The fiber products are all your papers, newspaper, notebook paper, magazines, and a whole lot of boxes. We, we typically do 15,000 to 17,000 ton a year just of commercial cardboard. The fiber is dropped off by truck, and the workers sort through all the fiber material, removing what doesn't belong, like styrofoam and plastics. Once all the fiber is sorted, it's pressed into bales to be sent off and made into new products. Uh, once the truck is, is dumped and cleared of, of uh, all his fiber material, he proceeds to another section of the plant here, and they dump off the commingle material. The commingle material would consist of, of, of the different grades of plastic, all your tin cans from the household food products, the aluminum cans, and uh, your glass containers. Again, it's just a lot of sorting. Workers sort the glass by color, the plastics are put in their own pile, the aluminum is picked out, and the tin is separated. Once it's sorted, the plastics, tin, and aluminum are baled up as well. Um, our baling machine has a million pounds of, of, of force on the baling ram. The in feed conveyor feeds the material over top of, of the charge chamber and there's a baling ram that, that um, goes back and forth to bale the material up and once, once a bale is achieved there's a side ram that pushes the bale out and uh, there's an automatic wire strapper that throws the uh, steel ties around the bale. And then it is ready to be shipped out to market. Recycling is one of the easiest ways to conserve and keep our planet clean. By making new products from recycled materials, natural resources like water and trees are conserved and less fossil fuels are used, drastically reducing air pollution. From 1980 to 2007, the average amount of trash generated by one person has increased from 3.7 to 4.6 pounds per day. During that same time, the amount of trash that makes it to the landfill has decreased from 89% to 54%. The EPA estimated that paper and paperboard made up 32.7% of the trash that was generated in 2007, more than any other material. Fortunately, paper and paperboard are also recycled more than any other material, making their way from recycling centers to companies that turn what was once waste into new and useful products. Salve Paperboard in Salve, New York, is one company that is taking advantage of this growing stream of material. For them, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Here at Salve Paperboard, we manufacture and recycle, 100% recycled container board. What container board is, is the material, the raw material used for making corrugated containers. A corrugated container is like the brown box you might see at a grocery store that they're unpacking cans from. It's 100% recycled, so we don't cut down trees and repulp them here. We bring in raw material that's, uh, that's gathered by recyclers across New York and New England. We receive approximately 800,000 tons a year across all three paper machines, and that's our raw material for the process. Uh, when the bales are received, they're brought into our warehouse. 
where they're then conveyed by a conveyor into what we call a pulper. The pulper is like a huge blender that shreds the raw material and mixes it with water. It breaks the material down to the original fibers that made the box in the first place. After this, the mix, or slurry, is sent through a bunch of cleaners that get it ready to be made into new paper. The clean stock will be then sent to the paper machine. At this point, it is approximately 1% fiber and 99% water. The slurry is then forced out onto a moving screen. The screen is very similar to what you see in a, in a window in a home, and the water is then drained out through the bottom of the screen, and at some points in time, uh, vacuum is applied to further remove the water. At the end of that portion of the process, we have approximately 25% fiber and 75% water. The remaining fiber, called a web, gets fed through rollers that use 700 pounds of pressure per square inch to squeeze out even more water before being sent through a huge dryer. The web passes over several steam-heated cylinders where the surface temperature is approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit. At the end of this section, the web will be made up of 9% water and 91% fiber. At that point in time, it's considered a finished product. The finished product is a 20-ton roll that can be cut to size and shipped off to a company like Southern Container. We take their paper and we turn it into corrugated boxes, which are uh, the general public calls them cardboard. Our boxes are made out of three pieces of paper, the inside liner, the outside liner, and a corrugated medium, which is on the inside of the box. The medium gives the structure to the box, which uh, it acts like the two by fours in a wall that uh, gives all the, the support to the product. First, the container board is pressed to create the corrugated medium. You add ste steam and heat to it to form those wrinkles, much like when you iron your clothes, you're ironing wrinkles out. In this case, we're ironing wrinkles into the paper. An earth-friendly glue, made of cornstarch, which is also used to make gravy, attaches the medium to the outer layers of container board. Once attached, the sheets are cut to the right size and stacked in piles. And those sheets are sent across to the converting side to be manufactured into boxes. Here, the boxes are formed. It's estimated that Southern Container makes a billion square feet of box every year, almost all from used material and no new trees. Now that's recycling. So knowing that we aren't contaminating, that we're actually reusing products, we're saving trees, um, I think it all gives us all a good, good feeling. Recycling can help keep the environment clean by doing what, is it? keeping trash out of the landfill, reducing the amount of raw materials that are needed, reducing the amount of fossil fuels that are used, all of the above. And the correct answer is number four. Recycling keeps more trash out of the landfills. It also reduces the amount of natural resources and fossil fuels that are used because making new products from reused materials requires less energy and natural resources. Vacant and rundown houses are often torn down to make room for new buildings or to keep the community safe. Often these destroyed homes are thrown into the landfill. One company in Buffalo, New York is trying to change that by taking houses down in pieces and saving as much material as possible. Buffalo reuse is an alternative to demolition. Um, essentially, we uh, saw just an immense amount of money and resources uh, going into the demolition of abandoned and vacant structures here in the city of Buffalo. And we wanted to create an alternative that would result in throwing less of that stuff into a landfill. We are a, a, a nonprofit deconstruction um, organization. We, we take apart houses. Uh, removing the building, but also saving as much material as possible. We actually talk about harvesting that. We talk about, that's the term we usually use, is harvesting and material from a house. So we're just now getting ready to take the roof off. When you deconstruct a house, you build it, you take it down in the complete opposite order that it was built. So when you build a house, the last thing to go on is the roof. And when you deconstruct it, the first thing to come off is the roof. And then we'll go down and we'll take the ceilings and then the walls and then the floors and we'll be moving forward. 
the reality of the situation is, is there's a lot of unwanted houses in the city. So our goal is to get some mileage out of that. If we're going to have to take them down, let's save the material so other people can fix up their houses and do it with good material. We get, we, uh, get a lot of hemlock uh, out of houses. We get a lot of fir, um, get some oak, and uh, a lot of woods that you're just not going to get at the local big box. Not the local, but at, at your uh, um, outlet mall big box store because they're astronomically expensive or they're just really not even produced anymore. So we've, we, we come across a lot of unique stuff. The older stuff in the city is built to last and that's a lot of the stuff we get. And so if you just sort of refinish it, it's good as new and it is a uh, good quality. It's not like we're wasting things, we're, we're putting things back to use. And if we're going to do it, let's do it in a way that creates the most jobs as possible. And then finally, in a way that has good follow through and keeps the community in mind. It's really nice to be able to help in at least this way and save a lot of the building materials, a lot of the wood, keep from cutting trees down and also preserve a lot of like architectural stuff that's in the city. We have a lot of beautiful architecture, so it's nice to save that. So we are doing it for the same cost and we're creating a lot more uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, as a result of that the material. We have job creation. We have a lot of infusion of energy into the communities. We have a, a good, great, great crew of people that really care about the work that they're doing and the, and the communities that they serve. And all of this really gives back to Buffalo in a big way. I like to do a little something that's going to help it out and hopefully bring it back to better standing. <laughs> it's exciting. It's challenging. Um, it's something to look forward to every morning when I wake up. It's also very satisfying to know that uh, the um, the uh, materials here in, in our in our community that would end up in a landfill are being diverted back in, into the community. We've been here just a few months. We have about 1,200 doors in this room alone. Uh, we probably have 4,000 different spindles here. The old tin ceilings that they used to put in houses. We've got several styles of cabinets, kitchen cabinets, overhead cabinets, uh, furniture cabinets, desks. For the person, if the person's interested in it, they'll spend a little bit extra time to, to make it special just because it's unique and different. You know, you, you look at just kind of like the goodwill type of thing, or Salvation Army, and people are always changing clothes and getting rid of clothes, and, and it's become part of uh, what you do when you get rid of clothes is you take it and you donate it somewhere. Well, we're hoping to do the same thing here so that this can be more of just the norm, is that when you have extra building materials or you have stuff that you don't need anymore, that there's a place that you can take it where other people can find the materials that they need. The EPA reported that in 2007, what material made up more of the trash in America than any other? Was it metal, plastic, paper? And the correct answer is number three. Paper and paperboard made up 32.7% of the trash produced in America in 2007. Since the 1960s, recycling has taken off across the country. The EPA reports that in nearly 60 years, the percentage of trash that is getting recycled has grown from just 6.4% to over 33.4%. And that's all for this week's show. From all of us here at Assignment the World, I'm Tiege Jenkins. Have a great week.